Institute's TV, you may begin. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sam Sperry, co-chair of the Horizon House Residents Election Forums Committee. And on behalf of my co-chair, Laura Weiss, I welcome you and the candidates to our forum for the Office of Washington's Secretary of State. I want to thank in particular Julie Anderson, Steve Hobbs, Mark Melosha, Marquez Tiggs, and Keith Wagoner. They will be responding to questions prepared by our residents and presented by our resident moderator, Neil McReynolds. This important office, Secretary of State, was established with the adoption of Washington State's Constitution in 1889. The secretary is elected every four years and is second after the lieutenant governor in the line of succession to the office of governor. The office provides an annual salary of $116,950 and employs 290 employees statewide. While, the, while most widely known as the state's chief elections officer, there are 12 enumerated primary responsibilities for our Secretary of State. To read about these responsibilities, you may go to the office's website, Secretary of State at sos.wa.gov. Our Secretary of State oversees elections for federal offices as each state, not the federal government, is responsible for conducting elections for president members of the US Senate and House of Representatives. The mission statement for the secretary calls for, quote, preserving the integrity of elections in Washington state, close quote. Here, our secretary of state oversees elections in collaboration with Washington's 39 county elections officials. Each county operates voter registration, voting, and vote counting under the authority and supervision of the Secretary of State. The Secretary certifies the results of all elections and declares the results official. Other less well-known responsibilities of the Secretary include administering the state's address confidentiality program for survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking registering individuals, organizations, and commercial fundraisers involved in charitable solicitations. These duties are of crucial importance to the smooth and lawful functioning of our state's society and economy. Finally, this important elected official takes an oath to serve the public trust by performing public outreach to improve civic knowledge and participation, providing the business community and public with easy access to information about corporations and charities, safeguarding vital government records, documents, publications, and process, and playing an active role in fostering international trade in collaboration with other state officials. Now it is my pleasure to turn over the microphone to our moderator, Neil McReynolds. Neil? Thank you, Sam. This evening is our first election forum of the year. We feature the candidates for the only statewide office on this year's ballot, the, Washington, the Office of Washington Secretary of State. Five candidates in this position will be participating in our forum this evening. In alphabetical order, they are Julie Anderson, an independent from Tacoma, Steve Hobbs, the incumbent and a Democrat from Lake Stevens, Mark Melosha, a Republican from Federal Way, Marcus Tiggs, a Democrat from Seattle, and Keith Wagner, a Republican from Body Lake. Well, thanks to each of you for agreeing to join us for our election forum this evening. Here's the format we'll be using. Each of you, uh, you as candidates will have two minutes for an opening statement, and you'll have the opportunity to respond to questions prepared by Horizon House residents. You'll have one minute to answer each question. At the end of the question and answer period, you'll have two minutes for a closing statement. Since this is a forum, not a debate, there will not be a rebuttal, but you may include the such remarks in your closing statement. 
we appreciate would appreciate your honoring the signals of our timers. This will ensure we are fair to all of you and that we can cover as many topics as possible with our questions. Our timers, Bobby Spaeth and Doris Ray, will give you an on-screen warning sign that will alert you when you have 15 seconds remaining. And then when you, when you get a final sign to finish now. Now for your opening statements. For this item only, we have sent you the question in advance. So please include it in your answer in your response to this question. The question was, please tell us why you are a candidate for the position of Washington's Secretary of State, what your goals emphasis of this position will be, and how you plan to accomplish these goals. For their opening statement this evening, candidates will be called in alphabetical order. So first will be Julie Anderson. Julie? Thank you. Again, my name is Julie Anderson. I'm your nonpartisan candidate for Secretary of State. I'm a, offering my candidacy because I believe that voters like you deserve a choice. Um, I think that you deserve to have a candidate to select who has professional expertise and practical experience running elections, preserving uh, documents and making them accessible to the public, um, and that you deserve to have that kind of expertise without any political party strings attached. So I offer myself as a candidate for Secretary of State. For the last 12 and a half years, I have been the Pierce County Auditor, and that's, of course, the second largest county in Washington State. And in that role, I have overseen and conducted uh, over just hundreds of elections, over a dozen recounts, citizen initiative procedures, uh, you name it. And over that time have developed um, uh, trust um, and with my voters and the residents of Pierce County and a lot of deep experience. You asked what my emphasis is going to be uh, whenever I am the Secretary of State. And not surprisingly, I want to make sure that political parties are not in the office and that there is due time for nonpartisan um, emphasis. I want to increase access to elections and improve transparency, security, and push back on misinformation. Well, thank you, Julian. Steve Hobbs. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I, I'm the current Secretary of State and also a dedicated public servant. I am the reason why I want to stay uh, Secretary of State is because I have from the very beginning wanted to protect the foundation of our democracy, which is, which is our free and fair elections. I've been involved uh, with uh, democratic, democratic uh, uh, efforts and elections in both Kosovo and Iraq, and I want to continue to do that here. The, ex the evolution of the Secretary of State's office has gone from an office where, you know, you just take elections for granted to now where national security issues have come into play. We've all seen what happened the January 6th where you had insurgents try to storm the Capitol both in DC and here and uh, in, in Washington state. Most of it was because they were misinformed. Well, we have the ability to educate the public and let them know how elections are ran, especially letting them know the good work that our 39 county auditors are doing right now. I'm also dedicated to ensuring that our, our, our Miss um, underrepresented communities and underserved communities are, are, are reached out to. It's not just a language barrier, but it can also be a cultural barrier too. As someone who is a son of an Asian immigrant who came to this country learning English by watching Sesame Street, I know all too well what she had to go through. And so I wanna be a part of that. I wanna continue the efforts, what we need to do for this office to secure elections, to inform the public and to do outreach. And already we have had a budget um, that was approved to increase cybersecurity, to do the outreach and to do the education. Thank you, Steve. Mark Malosha. Mark, are you with us? Thank you. Now I'm on, now I got the <laughs> mute button off. <laughs> My name is Mark Malosha uh, from Federal Way. I'm running for Secretary of State to restore trust and integrity to, to our election system. We all know trust is an all-time loan nationally and even in Washington State. 
It happened to both political parties for four years. You know, every all, all Democrats were upset with our election process. Now Republicans are upset. Um, we need to elect uh, uh, a secretary of state who, who knows how to fix our system, to have measurable improvement and results across our entire election system. And my background, I served on the election committee as a Democrat for all my 14 years in the House. And I served for two years and I was chair of the state government elections committee um, in the state Senate. I understand the issues and I know what processes need to be fixed. How do we improve our system so we have measurable results? We don't just tell the, the voters that things are working or we're observing things correctly. We have to show the evidence. We have to validate every single voter is, is correct. We have to validate the way the counting is done is correct and make, meets uniform standards. I am gonna be, as Secretary of State, we need to involve the public into all aspects of our election system from access, which means get as many folks registered to vote as possible to making sure that when the election is, is occurring, that we have a fair and balanced election system. And how do you measure that? We have to talk to the voters and get their measurable inputs on how well we're doing. I intend to score and evaluate all our counties and how well they're doing and assist the county orders to make sure that we have the evidence to prove that our elections were fair, balanced, secure, and just. I will bring my uh, quality and auditing skills to the forefront. Mm -hmm. I am the only person with the audit and quality background who will measurably fix our system. That is why I'm running for Secretary of State here uh, this year. Uh, thank you, Mark. Marcus, uh, Marcus T uh, Tiggs, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Marquez Tiggs. I am running for Secretary of State as a Democrat. Uh, I choose to run for Secretary of State because I want to make a difference. Uh, I believe that representation matters, voter education matters, combating election misinformation matters. I, I am here for Washingtonians. I want to make sure that Washingtonians are being informed as much as possible. Transparency and honesty are very important to Washingtonians. And I'm here to make sure that their needs are met. Washington State has maintained recognized leadership in the nation with its vote by mail system. And I want to maintain that legacy. Uh, my imagery alone will inspire voters and will build confidence in our state and local elections. My goal for this for this role is to make sure that Washingtonians are receiving accurate information about our elections before misinformation begins to spread. I want to increase in-person options to vote by possibly increasing bowling, uh, polling stations and upgrading and enhancing the voters guide. Um, as Secretary of State, I will strive to maintain high level integrity, I'm innovative, I'm knowledgeable in election administration, I'm ready to hit the ground running. Thank you. Well, thank you, Marcus. Uh, Keith Wagner. Thank you. I'm Senator Keith Wagner. I'm actually from Cedro Woolley. So there's a little uh, air that Bonnie Lake is my candidate headquarters. I'm a candidate because I want to give the voters their voice and their choice back. Uh, with, with none of this directed at Secretary Hobbs, he's innocent. I did not think it was appropriate for the man who's still exerting emergency powers over our state after 850 days to go against the voters choice by appointing a Democrat to an office that voters have elected Republicans to for five and a half decades. That means voters across the political spectrum, Republicans, independents and Democrats alike. So why has that been the case? Because voters are smart and they appreciate the balance and accountability that are critical, especially in this office. My vision for the office is to restore a sense of confidence against all, across all voters in the election system. And I think you can understand there's a decline in confidence in our system over the last several election cycles. I wanna be able to look voters in the eye and tell them your vote matters, it's gonna be safe on my watch, but I also wanna be able to show them so I'll work to provide transparency and access that people are asking for. Because if we don't build back confidence into our system, people are gonna self-suppress. And all types of voter suppression need to be addressed, but self-suppression I feel is particularly insidious. So the important part is how, how am I gonna do it? I'm gonna leverage all of my leadership experience 
as a Naval Academy graduate, as a Naval officer of 23 years, as a city councilman, as a former mayor, and as five years as a senator, to work with our counties and provide them the tools that they need to continually improve. And we have problems brewing other places in the Secretary of State's office. If you go to the corporate filing pages right now, there's a statement in red font that says some services are gonna take longer than normal. That suggests to me that perhaps resources need to be shifted. And I'll use my experience as a successful legislator who was able to get things done even while in the minority, um, which was my entire legislative career. Thank you. Well, thank you, Keith. And, and thank for all of you for your uh, responding to the, to the uh, in terms of the kind of opening comment. And that will move, be a move to the question submitted by Horizon House residents. Each candidate will have a minute to respond to each question and will be called in re rotating order. So the first question, was President Joe Biden legitimately elected? Explain your answer. And the first response will be from Keith Wagner. Keith, you're the first one up. Sorry, I have an old computer, so sometimes it's hard to find a mute button. <laughs> yeah, that question has been asked a lot. And I, what I like to tell people is I'm looking here at home in Washington state and in Washington state, there is no evidence to support any other conclusion that other than President Biden won in Washington state. And I don't know about other states. I'm not from other states. I'm focusing on what's important to Washington. And, and that is not to say, though, that we don't have problems in the state. And I think that is important to address that even if there is a small amount of uh, uh, fraud in our election system, it's not just the big races that are important. The small races matter, too. And whether it's a dike district or a library district or a city council race, when there's a small number of votes counted, um, it's important that there not be any measure of fraud that can affect that. So in my own hometown, I know that there was an election decided by a coin flip for city council. That means if there was one erroneous ballot in there, we could have got the wrong person for the job and that would have been a cheat to the whole town. So uh, I guess I'm done, thank you. Thank you very much, Keith. Mark Melosha. Um, I said soon after the election and in a, in a column for the Family Policy Institute, which I serve as executive director, is that we have to go through the entire process by and see what the court says. And that what happens, happens. We went through that process and it's clear. Uh, Joe Biden is president. Uh, all the court challenges ended and uh, he is now the president. That's how the system is supposed to work. The uh, courts have the final say, like it. same thing happened with uh, Bush v. Gore. At the end of the day, you know, uh, uh, we have a constitute, we are a constitutional republic, we follow the rules. And, and uh, but the, the goal is, and as Secretary of State, is to make sure that every election, we improve on the processes each year to, so there's less doubt out there about, did uh, somebody find a way to cheat the system or not? Uh, but. Right now, Joe Biden is President Biden. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Steve Hobbs. Yes, thank you uh, so much. Yes, he, he is president. I, I don't dispute that. Uh, but uh, this is just another example of how there's a, this false narrative that the, the election was stolen. That's why we need to deal with it. We have to, that's why we have to do voter education, let people know how, how the votes are being counted, how the ballots are being processed, uh, you just heard earlier that uh, one person mentioned they want more public transparency in the system. Well, guess what? Our 39 counties will let you go in there and view everything. Julie Anderson will let you look at the process in her county election center. Uh, Julie Wise, who's the King County Elections Director, will do the same. We have to do more to inform the public of, of, their, of the way people cast their votes in this state, and I think they'll be very pleased with it. Well, thank you, Steve. Marcus Tiggs. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Joe Biden was legitimately elected. Um, I do not believe that the election was stolen. Uh, like the other candidates stated, 
you know, we need to inform voters of how the election process is uh, done. That, that's it, that's all. Okay, thank you, Marcus. <laughs> Julie Anderson. Yes, uh, President Joe Biden was legitimately elected and uh, we, we can't just concentrate on what's going on in Washington state. Um, in my 12 and a half years of experience, what I know is that in every federal election, there is a tsunami of information, some of it legit, some of it misinformation, some of it disinformation that comes from states all over the United States. And our voters are overwhelmed, not really understanding states' rights, local choice, and how we have different election laws throughout this great republic. And so it's very confusing for even the most well-engaged voters. Um, that's where experience really matters, is being able to explain uh, the different election laws in different states, how they relate or don't relate to Washington state. I have a lot of confidence in my peers across the United States, and I collaborate frequently with them. Thank you, Julie. We'll move on to our second question. Do you support Washington's vote by mail system? Uh, Mark Militia. Pardon me. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, now, we, that doesn't mean that we also can improve the vote by mail system, improve the security and the integrity of the vote by mail system. But it's awfully convenient to, uh, to many voters in our state. In fact, I, I would use an absentee ballot in my uh, 14 years in uh, military service. And it was, uh, we just got to make sure that our vote by mail system works correctly. Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, Steve Hobbs. Yes, I, I totally support the vote by mail system. It allows the convenience of being able to vote in your own home uh, 18 days before election or sometimes longer. Uh, and, and our overseas voters, I served overseas and got to vote when I was deployed. And, and my, my two um, boys are in the military as well. Uh, we have a great system here in the state of Washington. Yes, we do need to do more. And there's some, some things that we can do uh, maybe to help those overseas voters a little bit and, and those folks with uh, disabilities like my middle child. Uh, right now, the law states that you have to have a paper ballot um, on all instances, which I think is a good thing, but I think we can work on other systems to improve uh, the efficiency and uh, uh, the ability, the ease of um, people voting who are overseas or have disabilities. Well, thank you, Steve. Marcus Diggs. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I do support the uh, vote by mail system here in Washington State. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, Washington State has maintained recognized leadership in the nation with this voting process. Um, I believe that we should not only focus with overseas ballots being counted, but we also need to focus on uh, the ballots that need to be uh, counted here in the state that are being rejected for signatures. Um, I think that's the only thing that uh, we, we would need to focus on as far as in the state, because there are a lot of uh, ballots that are rejected due to signature errors. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Yeah, Julie Anderson. I absolutely support vote by mail um, and was happy to support the passage of that bill. Um, vote by mail combines the best of many worlds. Uh, one convenience as has already been mentioned, but also security. Um, it's one of the most auditable methods of election because it's paper-based. Um, also from an election administrator point of view, it's much easier for me to maintain control, quality control, again, auditing um, in a paper-based vote by mail system. Um, but we can do more. And uh, like uh, Mr. Tiggs, I am worried about access to elections. And I think that we can do more to make sure that people that uh, aren't returning their ballots 
that they're not doing it because they're receiving, uh, encountering barriers that are unnecessary. So I've done a lot of work in my county to eliminate barriers, and I want to share those practices statewide, including, I agree, more access to in-person services on Election Day. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Keith Wagner. Thank you. Yeah, the, the accessibility provided by mail-in vote ballots is incredibly important to our citizens. I think about my own parents who live way up on the hill and, you know, maybe go to the mailbox once a day or a town or once a week. If we didn't have a mail-in capability, they wouldn't vote. And I remember my time on the ship out in the middle of the ocean with my mail-in ballot, so I was able to vote that way. But I also would support other opportunities for people to vote in person if they so choose. I think that we could have a blend. But what I really support is whatever the voters want. And right now the voters have shown their preference for mail-in voting. If they choose to do it another way, that's up to the voters. It's really not up to the Secretary of State. It's up to the Secretary of State to support their decision in the execution of our election. And I think it would, is very important that we get at our voter rolls and make sure that they are clean for two reasons. One, it's a waste of resources if we're sending ballots out to people who have been long gone from their address or from the state or from this earth uh, sometimes. And uh, two, because it just leaves a, a, an accounting uh, problem out there when you have ballots that are gone to, gone to unknown people. Okay, the time is up there, Keith. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we'll move to question three. All across the USA and in Washington, the issue of election voting security is being discussed. What would you do to ensure that Washington's elections are secure and fair? Steve Hobbs. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we're working on the security of our elections right now. I had mentioned uh, we had had cyber threats already. We had to convene all the auditors, their IT specialists, and we even invited some commissioners dealing with election security from uh, cyber threats from Russia. Now, luckily the tabulation systems is closed, is closed, but we still don't want that threat into our county governments or our state governments. Additionally, combating misinformation, disinformation, we had a threat again from overseas that was trying to, we think, to uh, remove a security element on our, our computers. And so we dealt with that too, with another meeting. Uh, fair, we got to ensure that we, we stick to our vote by mail system and deal with the issue that Mark Marcus brought up, which is ballot rejection rates, because uh, we are trying to do that with perhaps notifying voters by a text message and letting them know that their ballots are rejected. They can come in and, and fix that. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Marcus, Marcus Tibbs. Can you repeat the question one more time, please? Well, all across the USA and in Washington, the issue of election voter security is being discussed. What will you do to ensure that Washington's elections are secure and fair? Um, so as far as I know that uh, the tabulation machines are not connected to the internet. So I would make sure that the people that we have in those facilities are transparent and trustworthy. And that's, that's that's it. Okay, thank you, Marcus. Uh, Julie Anderson. Well, uh, cybersecurity isn't enough. That's one uh, element for sure. And our election system is secure, uh, but we can do more. One of the things that I would like to do is um, take a closer look at the actual practices of the county auditors, making sure that uh, they are regularly um, engaged in penetration testing, um, making sure that the digital fingerprints of the software that is used have not been tampered with or changed. Um, we can do all of this and um, uh, we can do the hash test testing and open public meetings. And I'd also like to try a statewide risk limiting audit where all 39 counties are testing a statistically valid sample of a statewide race at the same time. You know, there's like 160 to 200 steps in setting up an election and security is from the voter rolls all the way through auditing and certification. I'm the only one here that has any of that experience. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Keith Wagner. 
Thank you. Uh, I am not a cybersecurity expert, don't pretend to be. I'm a leadership expert, and I would utilize the resources in the Secretary of State's office and build up that section that deals with election security. The other thing I would do, and I think Julie mentioned it, is go around the state. My, one of the first things I will do as the Secretary of State is visit every single auditor, find out what tools they need, and find out how I can best help them do a good job. Not every auditor's office is resourced in the same way as say a King County, Orange County. Some of them are state has an equal opportunity to access the tools they need to keep our elections secure. I think I just lost. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay, you have some wrap, you got 15 seconds to wrap up there. Okay, sorry about that. What happened? Okay, I think that'll do. Okay. Well, thank you. Sorry about, I don't know what happened there, but okay, Mark Melusha. Mark. There you go. I'm going to bring my quality and audit background uh, to this job. Uh, I'm the only one here who has actually performed audits on different government agencies, schools, processes. And uh, what I intend to do is set up fraud and quality units and, all, and fund it in all the different counties. I also make them implement quality management so we can gather the metrics for all the key points in, in the processes of how we run elections. Uh, we will have a scorecard. So we know which, um, which uh, county auditor, which county has the best system with the best validation of all the voter rolls, which one does the best of ensuring that there is no errors in the counting system and that there is true two-party verification of every key step of the way. And there's no, and we get mm -hmm. rid of the flaws in our election system to verify that we proactively close all the holes or the loopholes in the system where bad actors can cheat or to or can invalidate or or uh, or put their thumb on the scales of the results. Um, as as Secretary of State, we need somebody who understands how to implement this kind of quality and audit system and come up with the data to. And that's how we restore trust in government: is bring to the voters how things are going by the numbers. Thank you, Mark. We'll move on to question number four. In the state of Washington. The Secretary of State sends out no ballots and counts no ballots. That is the job of the locally elected county auditor in 38 counties and the elected election director in King County. The relationship between Secretaries of State and local election officials in some states is toxic. How would you handle the relationship between the Secretary of State and the 39 county election officials here in Washington State? Marcus? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I would handle it by effectively communicating with the uh, 39 counties and uh, making, you know, making sure the transparency uh, is, you know, being upheld. And uh, that's about it. Just the effect of communicating, you know, transparency. Okay. okay thank you, Marcus. Uh, Julie Anderson. Definitely communication is the key. Um, I've, I've been in this marriage for over 12 and a half years, and I had a couple of good partners, uh, Sam Reed and Secretary Wyman, and communication is key. Um, one of the things that I would do that's a little different than either of them did, um, and I don't think has been done before, is I'd I'd like to have legislative meetings and develop legislative policy in coordination with the county auditors. Um, and I think that's going to help a lot because of my nonpartisan status. Um, I don't, I, transparency, I, I don't have to win any, um, any points for my team, my political party team. I just have to be interested in what's best for Washingtonians and uh, be centered on 
auditors, which means that we're going to have a lot of alignment with the 39 county auditors, and I, I can be completely transparent with them. But communication is definitely the key. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Keith Wagner. Thank you. Yeah, it is an interpersonal relationship uh, drill that is going to have to be done across these 39 counties. And I have a lifetime of leadership in these types of situations. I've worked in foreign governments. I've worked at the embassy in Tokyo. Every job that I went to was a new steep learning curve experience. I worked with foreign officers in Korea and Italy and Japan. I'm pretty sure I know how to do team building in a, in a respectful environment. And I, I don't really think you said that in some states, it, it is a toxic relationship and that may be true. I haven't felt that in our state with my uh, limited experience in the area, but I think that it's something any good leader can work through and, and let everybody know they're part of the team. And that my goal as a secretary of state is to provide them the tools that I can get them to do a better job and also to learn from them because I am not an auditor. I can learn a lot from them and I'm ears open. Thank you, Keith. Mark Melosha. Throughout my career, it's all about being able to articulate a vision. That's how you bring a team together. And then you represent the right values and the values here are transparency, integrity, justice, we're here to find the truth. The Secretary of State and the County Auditors make sure we have the best election system of all 50 states. My goal is to have every county in this state have a flawless election system and we have the proof and the evidence that we can bring to the voters and bring to our peers all across the nation. We will implement best practices across all 39 counties. I think that's a vision and a plan uh, that all 39 counties and the public and Democrats and Republicans could get behind. I think election integrity combined with improving access and making it easier to vote for all eligible uh, uh, people in our state is how you unite people for a common goal. We're not here to get an answer. We're here to get the truth for the elections and be the best we can. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Steve Hobbs. Yes, you know, a lot of the a lot of the candidates just told you what they want to do. Let me tell you what I've done thus far. I've met with all 39 county auditors personally, uh, whether in Zoom or in person. Uh, also, my staff and myself attend the, the meetings that the Washington Ca um, County Auditors Association has put on together. And in fact, we do coordinate work with the county auditors on, on legislation. The other thing that we've done is we've had held emergency meetings with the county auditors, their IT teams, and with Homeland Security and the FBI when we had um, cyber threats or misinformation, disinformation threats. County auditors that need help. Some counties are from rural, rural counties that are tiny, tiny staff. We help them out uh, with communication, with fact sheets and analysis that we help these county auditors. And we're creating a, a county, uh, Secretary of State County response team where we can rapidly move a team in my office to assist these counties, especially these small rural ones that need our help. Thank you, Steve. I'm moving on to question number five. What election reforms, if any, would you propose? Julie Anderson? For example, and let me give you an example. For what example, for example, what, what about alternative methods of voting, such as proportional representation, ranked yeah. choice voting, or approval voting, et cetera. Yeah, really? that's, a, that's a much more specific question. Thank <laughs> you for clarifying <laughs> that. Uh, because I think we have a pretty darn good system as it is and a great set of election laws. But I do respect local choice. Um, and that is why I do support the local choice, uh, the options bill that the state legislature has um, been grappling with for years now that would allow for ranked choice voting if local jurisdictions wanted to uh, do that. 
Um, I think that that's how innovation happens, not just in Washington state, but nationwide. Um, some of the um, most important uh, reforms in democracy have happened from local experimentation. So I do support local choice. Um, ranked choice voting seems to have the most momentum behind it. Um, with the research that I've done, it does have some strengths and benefits, but we need to let communities decide. Um, we already have a top two primary, a nonpartisan primary, which is the envy of most of the United States. So we can build on that with some of these other electoral reforms like ranked choice voting um, and proportional voting. Uh, proportional voting, I think, uh, cures a lot of potential ills, um, including the uh, fights that we have over redistricting and those power plays. Um, it also mm -hmm. allows more non-traditional candidates to actually uh, enter the arena and serve their communities. But it's all about local choice. Thank you, Julie. Keith Wagner. Thank you. Well, they say there's nothing new under the sun and ranked choice has been tried in the state and it was not popular and failed. I'm not a fan of it because it's very difficult to explain to voters and in an environment that we're in right now, where there's already questions of, that eat away at people's confidence, I think that kind of change, if it were to come, um, would have to be slow. But as I said before, it depends on what the voters want, not what the Secretary of State wants. But if you're asking um, what changes I would like to see, there are legislative changes where I already am in, in the legislature. I do not think that uh, allowing felons to vote before they finish their sentences was good legislation. And I do not think that uh, same day registration was good legislation. I would remember Secretary Wyman testifying against that bill. So if, if I could change some things, which you can't as Secretary of State, you, you do what you are supposed to do under the law, those would be the things. Thank you, Keith. Mark Melosha. Well, I mentioned some of the reforms earlier. I'd have a scorecard. I'd intensify the uh, training um, for all um, election officials and volunteers. I'd, I'd very much involve the public more, observers in every step of the process. I would have um, mandatory daily audits done and reviews done as the election uh, counting is going on. We don't, uh, nobody builds a card uh, today and the only audit at the end, you know, the, at the final thing when the cars wheeled out, every step of the way must be audited. Uh, I intend to do that. Uh, and I have also talked about, um, uh, well, uh, Keith mentioned the, um, the ranked choice voting. Again, um, we tried that, that failed in, in fact, specifically in Pierce County. That's not the way I would go um, in the future. Uh, but the main thing, the biggest reform is, can we get agreement on, we want Washington State to be the best state as far as security and, and integrity of all 50 states. That's, that's a goal we need to have unity on. And that's what I'll do with Secretary of State. Thank you, Mark. Steve Hobbs. Yes, thank you very much. You know, actually, it's not really reforms because I, I think our state is doing great in vote, our vote by mail state. Really, what I want to do is uh, try to have more resources and more ability to reach out to voters across the state to let them know uh, how it, what it takes to vote here and how secure our elections. Uh, help those 39 counties. I had mentioned uh, creating a response team for those counties that just don't have the resources. 72% of our state in 2020, 72% of the voters actually voted by drop box, uh, believe it or not. And so, you know, some of these counties can't put out all the drop boxes, even though we require them to do it because they don't have the resources to do it. That's what I want to do. And not just uh, helping them um, uh, on, on those issues, but also on, as I said, cybersecurity and combating misinformation, disinformation, which we already had. Uh, the main thing is let's help those 39 counties do uh, continue to do the great job that they're doing. Thank you, Steve. Marcus Tiggs. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so I will not be uh, proposing any reforms. I think the voting system and everything about it is perfectly 
not perfectly fine. However, I think it's it's great. It's good. Um, however, it's up to Washingtonians. Uh, their opinions and interest matters. Uh, I'm, I, I do support uh, ranked choice voting if that's what Washingtonians want. However, it's it's up to Washingtonians, and that's what I'm. Um, that's what I'm banking on. Okay, thank you, Marcus. Moving on to question six, what should be done about the spread of purposeful deception about elections and election results? Keith Wagner. Yeah, well, I, I think um, we run up against First Amendment problems when we start to limit speech, whether it's mm -hmm. true or not true. The governor tried this uh, in a bill that uh, he proposed in the last session to criminalize what he would consider misstatements, lying, or misinformation. Uh, it got heard in committee, but it didn't go any further because I think that the majority party uh, in particular understood that that would run up against constitutional uh, challenges. So I think education, and you have to understand that we can't be uh, treating our citizens like they're children. You can't tell them what to believe, but you can work with them and show them uh, an open deck, what's behind the screen, which is what I wanted to do. And if you heard in my opening statement, I want to just not only be able to look them in the eye and tell them it's right, I want to be able to show them through transparency. And that I think is the key to revealing the truth without telling people, you know, you have to believe what I believe because forcing never works. Thank you, Keith. Mark Militia. Mark. If, if a secretary of state or a county auditor does their job correctly and provide the evidence of the processes, the validation every step of the way, um, you don't need to put out or fight misinformation. If you involve Democrats and Republicans and independents every step of the way, every key process where they're validating the, uh, the they're validating that things are done correctly, done legally, and that there is no, uh, no uh, loopholes for people to uh, cheat or commit fraud. If we involve people in the system, then you have the spokesmen that are telling the entire public that things are working correctly. If you have liberals and conservatives involved, and they're checking the system as it goes on, there you have the evidence that will be able to fight back against anybody out there who's all of a sudden just spouting nonsense. You don't fight nonsense with words, you fight it with evidence. And that is what we need to, uh, to bring forth to the public to regain their trust. We need to bring evidence that things were done correctly, that there are no holes for people to cheat. Thank you, Mark. Steve Hobbs. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark is, is right. We do have to educate the public. Uh, unfortunately, that's not enough because we have malign actors out there, nation states whose sole purpose is to send in misinformation to our country, to have each other go, uh, to, ha to have us fight one another. Uh, for example, when you, uh, what we would like to do is we, we see something um, uh, trending and we find out it was created by a bot or someone who's not real, that does happen. Uh, we're, we're, we're in constant contact with Homeland Security and CISA and the FBI to ensure, and with our social media platforms, is that if that person is fake telling lies, we should bring it down. But the main thing is education, letting our voters know how the process is worked. But we cannot sit, sit idly by to allow a tweet to become a retweet, to become a meme, and all of a sudden you have a false narrative and people are storming the Capitol. Thank you, Steve. Marcus, Marcus Tiggs. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, so like the other candidates stated, uh, transparency, uh, vote education, um, uh, getting, getting your information out there before the people who are spreading the misinformation out, um, before they get their information out. Um, I also, I also support um, passing a bill or proposing a bill to criminalize uh, mi spreading misinformation, voter misinformation, 
election misinformation uh, by candidates. But yes, yeah, so getting getting our information out before uh, the bots get their information out uh, would be a great way to combat uh, spreading misinformation about elections. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, Julie Anderson. Definitely before you start debunking um, misinformation and malinformation, you've got to pre-bunk. So that's uh, pre-inoculating the public with good information. So make sure that they all have, and the media too, uh, has strong knowledge of how the election system works so that they're more likely to be able to spot a lie. But people that are intentionally spreading or deceptive information, I think that's what your question was, uh, they're they're doing it because it works and they're getting something out of it. They're basically criminals. Uh, they're either raising money for a campaign or uh, some other purpose and telling them to shut up and sit down is not going to work because they're criminals. Um, so I would definitely do a lot of pre-bunking and um, uh and I would definitely continue the great system that Secretary Wyman started um, with our partnership with Homeland Security and the National Guard. Uh, they really are the experts that can detect uh, false posts and do that kind of technical disruption. Thank you, uh, Julie. Yeah. We'll move on to question number seven. The Secretary of State is a protector of important public records. What is your view on protecting and ensuring public access to our state government's records. Mark, Mark Walsha. Well, ultimately at the end of the day, we're here to serve the public. As far as public records, archives, um, libraries, what have you, um, uh, the Secretary of State has made sure that we're serving the needs of, of all the citizens of Washington State and in doing it in, 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 a, in a manner that provides value to what we're spending for this and for meeting the purpose of the law. It's pretty simple. Quality is about meeting the needs of the customer and doing a good job. Um, I, again, I'll go back to quality 101. You know, if you make the customer happy, uh, uh, you are doing a good job. And so uh, that's what we're supposed to do with as far as uh, records or uh, any sort of archival materials. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Steve Hobbs. Yes, thank you very much. Obviously, a big, big supporter of that. Um, and, and in fact, of visiting all of our archives buildings, I encourage all of you to do that. Uh, we keep a lot of records. We help, uh, we actually do a, a lot of it, our, our county records that we keep. Uh, the main thing that I want to make sure that we do is a better way of digitizing our records. Already, I've uh, had I had our archives division try to purchase two large scanners to help our archivists start to do more efficiencies in scanning. There, some of the larger documents they have to ship to Olympia. Uh, there are some archives buildings that I'm worried about because there's not enough space. So I'm very concerned about that. Uh, but the main thing is increasing our ability to do digitization of our records um, in, a, in a quicker manner so we don't run out of space at our archives buildings. <laughs> Yeah, th thank you, Steve. Marcus Tiggs. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Um, that is a great question. I will be upfront and honest with you. I do not know much about that uh, topic. However, I do agree with Mr. Hobbs, uh, Secretary Hobbs, with the digitizing of the records. Well, thank you, Marcus. Uh, Julie Anderson. Well, this is where my 12 and a half years of experience comes into play again. I run a document recording uh, office and have a great and I'm a, a state certified public records officer. So I'm a bit of a fanatic about accessibility of records. You know, the state archives holds every single document from local and state government that has been produced since territorial days. Making those accessible is something that I've uh, that my office has won national awards for. Um, also, let's not forget our state library, which holds the heritage and history of Washington State. 
that are so important. Those stories are so important to our local communities and to our state heritage. Making that accessible is something that I'm very passionate about. And I would love to do community archiving projects um, so that we get more records into state archives and into our state library for access. I could go on. Please visit my website at julieanderson.org. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Keith Wagner. Thank you. Well, um, Steve and Julie both got it right. So digitizing um, our records is extremely important. And I started the program at the United States Embassy in Tokyo for the Mutual Defense Assistance Office, where everything was just paper. Um, and these are international agreements that have a profound political effect. We began uh, by putting scanners in and starting a scanning system where we could scan and file and then catalog the, the originals in safe places. But one thing that's important about these documents is to disperse them and make sure that they're in fireproof and waterproof locations. Because if you put them all in one spot and you have a, a catastrophe, heaven forbid, uh, you will lose them all. So, it, so they need to be dispersed. They need to be scanned as, as many of them as we can because some of them are fragile and should not be handled personally. And then to uh, Julie's point about the libraries, yeah, that's a super important uh, to me. I came to Olympia to build a library and I got that library built in my hometown of Cedar Woolley. I will be looking forward to being the uh, lead on the state library and being responsible for it. Thank you, Keith. Moving on to the next question. Should the office of the Secretary of State in Washington be nonpartisan? Why or why not? Steve Hobbs? Yes, uh, um, so I, it doesn't bother me if it's nonpartisan or partisan. Uh, really, it's about the person who occupies the office. I know there's been talk about pushing a bill forward. The problem is I know Kim Wyman tried to do that. Neither party wanted it passed. Um, I can operate in any environment. You can ask uh, Senator Wagner and uh, former Senator Mark Melosha how I worked across the aisle. And sometimes I was a pain in the butt uh, with my own party. So it's about the person, really not about the party label. Um, but, you know, hey, if it passes or something like that, I, it's fine. I, I, can, I can live with it. But that is not my top priority um, in the Office of Secretary of State. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Marcus Tiggs. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, I do think it needs to be, have, I think the role needs to have a partisan label. So it will allow the uh, Washingtonians to know how uh, the Secretary of State is going to uh, just you know, uh, is going to let them know how, how they are going to try to sway the vote or try to, you know, do something that's not necessarily morally right. Um, so, you know, the role does need to have a label uh, because, you know, there are people out there who do not do the right thing uh, because of the party that they're in. And yeah, I, I agree with the Secretary of State having a partisan uh, label. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Uh, Julie Anderson. Political parties do not belong in that office. And it is true that we have elected leaders who can perform honorably and um, make good decisions with integrity, but political parties don't belong in the office. Too much skepticism um, is created whenever people, it's, it's, it's like having um, two teams in a championship ball game, and then one of the players puts on the umpire's jersey and starts calling balls and strikes over home plate. That just doesn't make sense, and it doesn't make sense to the voters that I speak with. And by the way, of the six charter counties, uh, Voters have already, that's like 56% of the voters in Washington state have already decided that they don't want their local election administrators to be partisan. So now is the time to make this job nonpartisan. And parties aren't the only ones that care about democracy, folks. 
There's just regular, unaffiliated, independent people that care a lot about elections and all of the ministerial duties in the office that have nothing to do with partisanship. Thank you, Julie. Keith Wagner. Thank you. Uh, well, I think we're dealing in kind of the theoretical here. It, uh, it, it is not going to happen, but I'll delve into it. I, I think it is important to have um, the labels that Mark has talked about. It gives you at least a baseline of, of how somebody might respond. And to use Julie's analogy, um, it's no different if the, the referee belongs to one team or another and you just don't know which team it is. So I think it provides valuable information, at least one point of information for voters to make a decision. And as I said before, for five and a half decades, we've had Republicans in that office, while the, the majority of the time the state has voted blue. I think that shows the intelligence of voters and the fact that they strategically and intentionally make that choice based on party. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Mark Militia. OSPI is a nonpartisan, uh, King County Council nonpartisan, uh, and judges are nonpartisan. I think it doesn't really, but everybody really knows who the candidate is or which party it is. Um, I think it's more important to focus on the integrity and character of the individual for the job uh, versus the party labels. It, to me, the party labels are um, for a job like this are, are somewhat irrelevant. Um, but it is a good piece of information for folks to know. Um, and um, parties aren't inherently evil. Um, and so having the party label uh, to me is, um, it's not worth changing the current system to go to a nonpartisan system. Thank you, Mark. We'll move to our next question. Is voter registration in this state easily available to all residents eligible to register? And is it convenient and secure? What changes, if any, do you propose? Marcus? Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I think the way that uh, vote, the way that the registration uh, system um, is going is perfectly fine. Um, people can register online. It's, it's very easy, very simple, very uh, accessible. So I wouldn't change anything about it. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, Julie Anderson. Washington state was the third state in the nation to offer online voter registration. And um, we uh, have benefited from that. I do think that voter registration is accessible. Um, the online tools that have been developed um, by Secretary Wyman and uh, provide for language accessibility. They are, are the registration system is accessible for voters uh, living with low vision and blindness, et cetera. Um, but I will say that this is the most common line of questioning that I get on the campaign trail. And frankly, in all 12 years as Pierce County Auditor, people don't have so many questions about cybersecurity and the machines that we use. They have more questions about who's on the voter rolls. Do they belong there? Are they qualified? Are there duplicates? And so we can do more work in terms of auditing and keeping uh, the roles clean. Um, I have a great deal of confidence in elections. And I can tell you that there may be a duplicate voter by accident because we don't have enough information on the voter, but everybody's just getting one ballot and one vote. And I know that because I run elections. Thank you, Julie. Keith Wagner. Oh, thank you. Well, I mostly agree with Julie. Um, it, it's a very accessible system. It may be too accessible and it is prone. There's some holes in it that cause some errors. Um, for example, I, I know specifically, and because I go around the state of people who are getting two ballots, Bill and William, the same guy gets two ballots every year, hasn't been able to make it stop since he got his new driver's license. So, so that's a problem. And I hear that everywhere I go. But uh, I think that the registration by the Department of Licensing needs to be tightened up so that only United States citizens are registered. And I am hearing from through my own family, because my wife is a naturalized citizen, 
green card holders who are getting ballots that they did not expect and did not know they signed up for. So that tells me there's a flaw in that system. I propose with my uh, Voter Confidence Act that there would be a signature pad at the Department of Licensing where you affirm that you're a United States citizen eligible to vote in Washington. Thank you, Keith. And Mark Melosha? Um, I believe there are serious issues with us validating um, all, the, all the folks that are on the voter rolls to get rid of all errors, duplicates, folks who uh, do not meet the requirements. Uh, what I hope to have is a system where every single person is validated. And we know which county auditors are doing a really good job or not doing a good job ensuring that every person who is on the voter roll and who is voting is uh, meets requirements. Uh, once we have that number and we can show that to voters, that's how we can ease some of the distrust, distrust out there. Thank you for Mark. Uh, Steve Hobbs. Yeah, I, I, I think the current system is doing really well. I know there was a bill that's being worked through the legislature that we had to uh, had to put down because it doesn't match uh, the way we do business here in the state of Washington. That's automatic registration. But you can even have their 17 year olds that can vote in the upcoming election as long as they turn 18 the general election. We've got the motor voter. Uh, no, this state is doing great on that. Um, and, and the fact that you know, you've heard some concerns about double ballots or people, you know, not not supposed to vote. But guess what? We do catch those. There's a very, very few and far between. But that does uh, that does happen. And we do catch those individuals. So um, I, I think we got a great system. Uh, let's keep it going. We don't need to suppress uh, voters. One thing I would like to do is do more uh, outreach to disenfranchised communities, underserved communities. And we're working the, with our county auditors to do just that. We did that uh, with our naturalization ceremony of July 4th, working with King County and uh, Julie Wise. Okay, move on to the next question, which gets at the last point is made. Which steps do you propose to increase voter turnout, especially among younger voters, 18 to 34? Julie Anderson. Well, one of the things that we need to do is we need to start communicating with young voters uh, in the way that they prefer, uh, not the way government thinks that they need to receive information and interacted with. So we need to develop contemporary um, methods of communication. And I'm not talking about just TikTok, right? Um, so one, modernizing. And then two, these are, um, these are digital natives who uh, know much more about navigating the internet than we do. And we kind of make it unnecessarily frustrating. So one of the first things that I would do is what I'm doing in Pierce County right now, which is a series of usability studies um, to, which are kind of like focus groups where you take the audience, in this case, uh, you know, 16 to 34 year olds, and you give them a series of tasks to do and they're watch doing them. How many clicks does it take for them to find out who their elected official is? How long does it take them to find out when the next election is? So it's common sense practices like this that I'm already doing in Pierce County that I would like to scale up and have statewide. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Keith Wagner. Well, first I'm trying to be a good parent. So I passed on the importance of this to all of my children who happen to be in that age group. And we've talked about it. Um, Julie is right. It's, it's hard for someone of my age and my generation to think I know what people of that age want or need when it comes to uh, information for voting. Um, I'm trying hard as a candidate to reach out to those people right now in different forms of media. So uh, I'm learning along the way. I think uh, aside from campaigning, that uh, part of the education budget that uh, is given to the Secretary of State could be used to target that age group so that they understand how to register to vote. And well, they, they're pretty much automatically registered to vote in Washington State unless they're coming in. But the importance of using that vote and what the schedule is and why we have primaries and why you should vote. Um, I think that's an education tool that uh, we need to work more on in this state. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, Mark Melosha. Thank you. 
bring if we help bring trust to our political election system, I think that will go a long way combined with um, a good education effort in civics, helping young people realize that it's their duty as a US citizen to vote. It is a responsibility. And we have an election system where we're encouraging, we're proactively reaching out to all folks in all groups in all four corners of our state to make sure that we're involved. But we have to start with making sure we have an election system where when you vote, your vote matters. And it's important for you to vote. I, I think if we keep it positive, we promote civics, we promote accountability, and it's your duty as a US citizen to vote. I think that'll go a long way with bringing young people to vote. Thanks, Mark. Steve Hobbs. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, uh, I'm old enough to remember Rock the Boat and all the things we did to try to get young people to vote. But what we really got to do is we got to jazz it up. I'm very excited about this question because we're already talking about creating a game app uh, for young people before the age uh, where they can vote to get them excited about voting, excited about civics. We're talking about going where young people are at. We're talking about going to PAX West. If you don't know what that is, uh, I, all your viewers, go ask your grandkids, go ask your kids. <laughs> They'll tell you exactly what it is. Um, and also, we, we do put out stuff to schools and curriculum, but we need to make it more exciting. You know, with working with some of the tabletop game industry, create a game out of it to really get them excited and involved at a young age so that when they turn 18, we can keep those, uh, uh, keep that voter turnout high. So that's what I'm going to do. It's outside the box thinking, but that's the way you got to get to your kids and grandkids, right? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Marcus Tibbs, Tiggs. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I would suggest using uh, social media. Uh, as everybody knows, you know, from the ages 18 to 24, they're constantly on their phones. So using social media would be a great tool to uh, educate um, a, to educate those young voters and also uh, have them uh, come out and vote. Uh, also, uh, maybe starting the programs in, in local schools and colleges that will enhance voter education uh, about the process and the candidates. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Marcus. Okay. Um... Moving on here to a next question is, what would you do to help voters become better informed about candidates and issues on the ballot? Keith Wagner. You caught me taking notes. Um, <laughs> okay. So the, the voters hand guide just came out recently mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that I think is a, a bit of an impediment to voting is where we put the advisory votes in the ballot. People come along and look at the advisory votes and they get confused because the language is confusing and they're in the front. So I think that uh, we should move those to the back of the ballot and to the back of the book it would have it would probably require legislative action to make that happen but i think it's a barrier and i think that that moving that out of the way so people understand they can just vote their candidates they don't have to vote the advisory votes if they don't want to but i do think it's important that they're in there so voters know what their legislators did that that's one of the changes that i would like to see take place thanks keith mark militia Well, um, I believe that our voter pamphlets is, is an excellent product that helps folks. Um, now that we're more in the digital age, you know, I know recently in the last, I think last three elections I was in, I did a little blurb, a little 90 second blurb or two minute blurb for TVW. Um, maybe we should at the same time that goes out, send out, you know, an, a 90 or two minute blurb out to all folks that are on registered to vote on that list, you know, kind of a digital voters pamphlet that, that sent out. I think um, something like that done according to the rules, just like the voters pamphlet would be a good upgrade in technology, you know, um, and I think, uh, you know, a 90 second spot is, is something that would uh, that wouldn't 
that wouldn't uh, put out too many of the voters getting something like that to a text or to an email where they can look and, and view uh, and view the candidates' information. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mark. Uh, Steve Hobbs. Uh, absolutely. What I would do is tell everyone to go check out the Horizon House election forum. I mean, that's where it's at. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, we have a we have a great system now with because uh, we've got a digital guide that you can access the, uh, on your phone or your laptop. I think maybe the next direction we could go, though this might be a little harder, might cost some money. We certainly look at it is when we when we do have the ability to send text messages out to voters that maybe perhaps we put that link in there. But really, we just got to get people um, educated about you know the, the process. If we can get young people involved, and then maybe they'll click that link and maybe they'll check out uh, what we do and, and read about us. Uh, that's the hope, anyway. Thank you, Steve. Marcus, Marcus Diggs. Thank you, sir. Um, actually, I think the voter pamphlet is pretty good as is. I don't think there's any changes that need to be made. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You know, it gives all the information that needs to be, um, you know, accessed uh, to the voter. So I would not change anything. Um, I do like the idea of text messaging. Uh, but other than that, I don't think there's anything that needs to be changed. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Uh, Julie Anderson. Would you repeat the question? Uh, what would you do to help voters become better informed about candidates and issues on the ballot? Okay. Well, look, let's face it. The voter pamphlet is just a tax subsidized commercial that's written by the candidates. Uh, the statements are not very illuminating. They're, they're mildly illuminating, but you're, it's just one way information without any context. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure that the Secretary of State's role is um, more promotion of candidates. That's the candidate's job. I do think, and I hear um, and have heard for over a decade, that people are confused, though, about the different roles between the branches of government, the federal, state, and local responsibilities. So we're really getting back to civics 101, not understanding or feeling confident about the difference between a levy and a bond. So I would lean in heavily into civics education and uh, my voice program, the Voter Outreach and Innovative Civic Engagement that I'm promoting um, that you can check out on my website. Yeah, thank you, Julie. Yeah. I'd like to move to the final question now. You've done a wonderful job of covering a lot of issues related to elections, but this one's got a little bit different, another important responsibility of the Secretary of State. The question is, what will you emphasize as you represent Washington and international trade and cultural missions abroad and host foreigners who visit Washington in return? Steve Hobbs. Uh, thank you very much. So we start off right away by doing the very first meeting with the Counselor General Corps <coughs> that's out there. So all the uh, different uh, diplomatic um, uh, folks that represent different countries came by to the office. So we had a, we had a meeting there to get to know each other. Uh, we're already uh, going to do a tour. I think two weeks from now, I'm taking a delegation of um, Asian uh, Council General Corps out to uh, some of the wineries and the tree fruit growing growers and a processing facility. Uh, so I'm taking them out there and then we're looking at a possibly trade mission uh, next year. So we're leaning forward uh, on this because you're, we do do that role. We, we do it in conjunction with the governor's office, the lieutenant governor's office, but economic development is very important to me. It's very important to the state and uh, I'll definitely uh, push that like I have been pushing already. Thank you, Steve. Marcus Tiggs. Um, I have to be transparent. I don't know too much about that topic. I'll have to pass. Okay. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Uh, Julie Anderson. Well, the question is, what would I emphasize? Um, there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen when it comes to international trade and economic development. I was a senior policy advisor for the State Department of Commerce um, and also had some economic development emphasis in the, my time on the Tacoma City Council and major um, port uh, city um, in Washington state. Um, so there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Um, I think that my primary role is going to be um, 
emphasizing where to go and how to navigate our economic development system and be in a supporting and backup role uh, to the Department of Commerce, uh, to the trade associations and to the Lieutenant Governor's office and the Governor's office. So um, I think my knowledge will come in handy, um, but mostly what I wanna do is make sure that there's smooth handoffs and that people are treated with great respect and that opportunities are made equally for everybody. Okay, thank you, Julie. Keith Wagner. Thank you. Uh, well, most of our trading partners are in Asia, as Steve pointed out, and I have extensive experience there. In the Navy, I was what's called a foreign area officer. I was an East Asian specialist. I speak some Japanese, still, uh, still pretty well these days, although it's faded. And I've worked in this space at the embassy where we worked with the Department of Commerce and the military to provide training and spares and manufacturing to that government. I've also worked in Korea. Um, and I've done it locally, too, as part of our Economic Development Alliance in Skagit and Snohomish County. We sponsored uh, the Chinese to come in and look at our orchards and our grains that are provided here in Washington State. I'm lucky enough to have my own uh, slew of translators, as both my wife and uh, all my children speak Mandarin fluently. So I think it's a little bit of an advantage going forward. But as Julie pointed out, you know, you have to trust your people too and work with them. So, but it, there are some skills that are, are uh, not well known on how to deal properly with people from different countries. And I have specific training in that area. Okay, thank you, Keith. Uh, Mark Melosha. I think I would emphasize that Washington State has it all, manufacturing, farms, uh, services, tech, entertainment, the out, great outdoors. Um, we're a, a world-class uh, community, a world-class uh, state, uh, and uh, that uh, very diverse state. And that, uh, and we've been on a 50-year growth spurt ever since the uh, collapse of Boeing in the early 70s. Uh, we've been growing, we've modified, evolved, and changed, but we've always focused on our excellence and being good neighbors. Um, I think that's why people have come to Washington State. That's why I came and stayed to Washington State. And I still think it's valid. We still have things we got to work out. We have bumps in the roads and, and things we're somewhat embarrassed off. But our future is ahead of us right now. And I think that's why we have immigrants from all across the planet coming here to Washington State. We're the place to be. We're the place to be. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And thank all of you for your good job of filling the questions we threw at you this, after, this evening. So. I'd like to move on. That concludes the questions from residents. Now we move to the final part of our forum, which are the closing statements from the candidates. Well, that's have a two minute maximum. Candidates will be called on to reverse order uh, to their opening statements. So the first candidate will be Keith Wagner. Well, thank you. And thanks for having all of us tonight. Um, I hope that I have convinced you that I'm the best candidate to be your next secretary of state. I served in the Senate for five years. I'm the minority whip. I serve on Ways and Means, Law and Justice, and I'm the ranking member on Behavioral Health Subcommittee. Um, I didn't get those positions by accident. I earned them. I was, I'm the only candidate that has served as a mayor and ha has had that executive authority. I'm, as far as I know, the only candidate who's served in small government as a uh, city council person. I have a lifetime of service in the Navy. I've worked overseas and we talked a little bit about that. I've earned the trust of my constituents and also the counties around me. So I'm endorsed by Skagit County, Snohomish County, Island County, Mason County women. I'm endorsed by uh, former Secretary of State Ralph Monroe and former Secretary of State Sam Reed. I think that paints a pretty clear picture of the type of people who think I'm the best person for the job. I hope that all of you listening tonight will come to the same conclusion, uh, but if not, I will accept that also. Um, I appreciate your time. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Marcus Tiggs. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank everybody for this opportunity. Um, I, I, I asked you to, to vote for me for Secretary of State because 
Uh, like I said, um, I will maintain high level integrity. Uh, I am innovative, I'm courageous, I'm knowledgeable in election administration. Uh, I'm ready to hit the ground running and I hope that I did a great job and answered all the questions that the voters wanted to hear. And again, I hope that you would vote for me for uh, Secretary of State of Washington. Thank you. Well, thank you, Marcus. Uh, Mark Melosha. Uh, thank you, Neil, um, Sam, and everybody else for putting the Horizon House for putting this on. Um, very enjoyable, enjoyable experience. I'm running for Secretary of State to make sure we have the best election system of all 50 states. That all 39 counties has that has not just that vision, but they have have the motivation to make sure that their voters trust them and they trust that our election system is a place where bad actors can't make a difference to our election results. Um, I served as an auditor, a quality examiner. I served the election committee for 16 years in Olympia. Accountability is my blood. I'm going to unite the state, unite Democrats, Republicans, and independents. My goal is to make sure that we have the evidence in place to make sure that every single citizen knows that every single step of our election process is done fairly, is balanced, and every, any person who wants to vote can vote. That's my vision. I know what has to be done as far as laws and regulations, how to unite the county auditors, get more citizens involved in the entire process. We're here to serve the voters, the people of Washington State. That's what the Secretary of State will do it. We'll do it in a fair, balanced, and we will emphasize integrity and transparency. That's what I intend to do as Secretary of State, and I appreciate everybody's support. Thanks, Mark. Steve Hobbs. Thank you very much. You know, based upon the questions and what we're seeing on the new January 6th hearing, security is important to everybody. Uh, I'm the only candidate that actually has that experience working in the National Security Agency, graduate of the Command and General Staff College, dealing with national security issues, dealing with um, misinformation, disinformation, being a graduate of the, um, of the Department of Defense Information School. Also, being your current Secretary of State for eight months, dealing with those very issues I just mentioned. We dealt with an incident with uh, cyber. We dealt with an incident with misinformation and disinformation. A lot of these candidates here are talking about what they want to do. I'll tell you what, I've actually done some things. I've doubled the cybersecurity team. I'm reaching out to counties, seeing if we can help them. We're going to create an exercise next year to get ready for the 2024 elections. With malinformation, again, we put more resources to the team to educate the voters, to let them know how our ballots are, are processed and counted, and also combating those malign actors that are putting out fake posts. They're not, maybe not even real people. And we're going to work with our, with our federal agencies and our social media platforms to try to bring those down. Additionally is outreach. Look, I, I'm a son of an Asian immigrant. I remember when my mom tried to learn English and, and tried to get and got her natu and naturalized and try to vote. I remember that. And so what better way for someone who understands those communities that are underserved from somebody who comes from those communities? I understand what it takes. I've been here for eight months and think of the things I've already done. I'm asking for another two years um, and I can do a lot more. Thank you very much, everybody, and to all the candidates that are here today for your time to address the people here. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thanks, Steve. Julie Anderson. Well, thank you. Um, and thank you to her Horizon House and the timekeeper, the moderator, all of you. This is a great example of the kind of civic engagement that really brings our country together and makes our democracy strong. So thank you. I am running as the nonpartisan candidate and I feel so strongly that par political parties don't belong in the administration of elections that I'm not accepting or soliciting any um, endorsements from political parties nor money from political parties. Sometimes taking the High road means you have to take the hard road. I am really passionate about this work and I hope my enthusiasm came through. I'm nationally certified election administrator, state certified election administrator and a state certified public records officer with over 12 years of experience doing the work. It's not something that I dabble in, it's something that I actually do. And I've earned the trust and support of over 30 election administrators in Washington state, the Republicans, the Democrats, independents and nonpartisans. They're the ones that do the work and know the most about the office and they've put their trust in me. That means a lot. 
Um, I'm looking forward to enhancements to our wonderful um, system of elections in Washington state. I believe that we're at our best when voters feel welcomed to participate, when they understand how to participate and can do it easily, and when they know and feel certain that their vote is counted fairly and securely. So those are my values. Um, please check out my website, julieanderson.org for some more details about programs that I would like to initiate with you. Thank you, Julie. And on behalf of the residents of Horizon House, thank you to the Secretary of State County to participate in our forum this evening. It's really a good program uh, uh, talking about all the issues of education, elections and election administrations has been very, very helpful to us. And so thank you. A reminder to our residents, ballots for the August 2nd primary election will be mailed tomorrow. So this election is not too far off. So now we'll turn the program back to the co-chair of the election forums committee, Sam Sperry. Sam. Sam. Hmm. Well, hmm. he's muted. He's yeah. muted. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's wrap it up. This. Thank you. Thanks, all those uh, in the audience of, and the. Uh, thank you again for the candidates. We appreciate your. Thank you. Thank you. We'll keep up the good work on all the roles you've been playing currently. I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to say thank you all for participating. Uh, we really appreciate it and we wish you the best. Good night. Good night.